Well, hello, students, parents, leaders, whoever is watching. Thanks for joining us again in another week of coming alongside of our churches as we study what the church is, what is our responsibility as, the follow, as followers of Christ. For you students, you, you know how uh, the church is formed. We're part of the student ministry across Brentwood Baptist Church, where we call to love others, to worship God, and to make his name known to all the ends of the earth. And so as we're continuing to talk about the church, we're kind of deciding how do we know what the church is? What are some actions of the church that can tell us who the church is? And so for many of us, there's certain things that define who we are right? Students, we love social media, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, but probably the biggest one right now is Instagram. And one of the ways that you know about someone on Instagram is through their bios. We use our Instagram uh, to bio to promote events, to write, right? To tell you what's coming up uh, in the student ministry. But a lot of you have some really funny Instagram bios. And uh, I think about some certain brands that I love uh, that have some really funny Instagram bios. For one, a uh, Tennessee product called Moon Pies, right? How many of y'all love Moon Pies on the screen? If you're watching, let us know. If you love Moon Pies, a great Tennessee product. They, a couple months ago, they made this big push to try to get a Moon Pie on the moon in space. And they petitioned NASA that you could sign up and help get Moon Pies in space. Some of you love Pop-Tarts. We go on fall retreats. We go to camps. Y'all destroy some Pop-Tarts. Pop-Tarts is real simple. It says, eat Pop-Tarts, thank you. It gives a way for you to buy. A lot of people use Instagram bios different ways. Some of you put your favorite movie quotes, right, uh, on your Instagram bio. That tells us that you're either, that some of you are really funny, that you have a great taste in movies. Some of you put even your music lyrics, right? Uh, you put uh, one of your favorite bands, and you that's how we can know who you are. But those little pieces on our social media tell us a lot about ourselves, right? Well, for us, what tells us about who the church is? And that's what we're going to be discussing today as we look in Scripture. And so uh, I hope that you've got your Bibles with you. Uh, turn with me to 1 John 3, and we're going to discuss how do we know what is the bio of the church? How do we know that we are doing what Jesus has called us to do well? And we learn from 1 John 3 that we are called as the church. How people know us as followers of Jesus is our love for one another. And so we're going to start in 1 John 3, verse 11. And we're going to read uh, through verse 24. And it says this, For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning. You should love one another. We shouldn't be like Cain, who was the evil one who murdered his brother. Why did he even murder him? Because his deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be surprised, brother, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Who does not, whoever does not love abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and, whoever, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. But this we know love, because Jesus laid down his life for us, so we ought to lay our lives down for the brothers." For others. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love just in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And by this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of the Son of Jesus, and that we love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandment abides in God, and God by him. And this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit on whom he has given us. Friends, students, leaders, parents, there are so many things that we try to promote in our lives. And it's good, right, that you can take ownership and that you can promote what is important to you in your bio, in your bio of life. But I think for us, we are called, as this scripture says, to lock shields with one another, students. 
to see each other as our brother, as our sister, as a member of our family. And we are called to love one another. Jesus gives this story that the author of 1 John, John, he gives us the story from Genesis of Cain and Abel. These guys were brothers. And yet God's love didn't abide with him that they thought they, that one of them did something that we would never even dream of doing to our family. And what we see is our condition and our need for Jesus. But we also see the great love that Jesus has for us. And that verse 16 says this, that he laid his life down for us. The ultimate example of love selfless love to be able to say that there is nothing that you have done there is nothing that you will do that is outside of Jesus's love for you and so how do we respond when we know that it's the greatest message of all time that Jesus laid down his life for us well John says this your response the bio of your life the bio of the community of believers called the church is to lay down your life for others to put others before yourself. And I know in quarantine and in this time period, it's hard to think about others because we've become so isolated in our homes. Our social lives have kind of gone astray. Our routines have kind of been stopped. But that's not, that's, that can't stop us as the church, as you who have been called by God to go and love others. And John, I think, is very Uh, he does a very cool thing in this, and he says, don't let it just be in word or talk, but in action, deed, and in truth. I think for us, right, we forget and we can promote in a lot of what we say, even on our social media and our Instagram bios, that's who we want the world to see us as, but our life doesn't match it, right? We have to be able to see that God is calling us not to just talk about love, but to show it in action, in truth, in word, in deed. And the cool part of this, students, parents, leaders, is that the church, Brentwood Baptist, your campus is doing things all over Nashville, all over Tennessee, all over the United States, all over the world to make Jesus' name known, to love as he has loved us. Through Mission 615. Mission 931, through going to Chicago, going to camp, to serving in Vancouver, all of those things to support missionaries all over the world. We get to be a part of God's great mission to show the love that Jesus showed for us on the cross. We get the opportunity together as brothers, as sisters, as family to love as he has loved us. And what's the result of that? We're keeping God's commandments. We're following his word. We're loving others. And as Jesus says this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So many of us call that the greatest commandment. For us, we get to keep that. And for us, people get to see that we are matching our words and our actions, that the bios of our life is love that the things that we promote is selflessness and that what we are about is that Jesus is the most important thing. So for you, my question is this, what are you doing? Is your life matching up with what your words? Is this scripture, is it permeating every part of your life so that others know exactly where you stand? And most importantly, students, who is God placing on your heart to show this love? Who's the Holy Spirit working in your life for you to say, this person needs to see my love, the love that Jesus showed for you, you need to go to show for them. So as you think, as you sit, as you think about the words from 1 John 3, may God's love overwhelm you, and may you be moved to a place where you cannot help but love others. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your scripture. May the bios of our life match up. May what people see about us, may it be true. And may that thing be of your love. God, we're reminded again today, and we need to be reminded every day, of the love that Jesus showed for us on the cross. The most extreme type of love where he laid his life down for us. For everything we've done, for everything we will do. 
may that action lead us to a place of worship and adoration of who you are. But it also, may it move us to a place of mission for where we go and serve and love others. That people will know us by our love. That that is the one thing that sticks out above everything else. And from that, God, we can't wait to see what you're going to do in our church, both in Middle Tennessee, in the United States, and in the world. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us.